for the church. I'm not just talking about the United Methodist Church or the Protestant Church, even just the Christian Church. Religious organizations across the world are living into a new day, a new way of being, because the old way is no more. I'll let you in on a secret. We're never going back to the old days in the life of the church. You know, the heydays, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, when, when churches were thriving on every street corner, in every town, in every city. We're not going back there. At least not in the way that we grew up. Some of us grew up understanding church. As I shared with you, I'm a regional guide in, this, in the Annapolis Southern region of the Baltimore Conference. I have 31 churches that I care for, 31 pastors I coach every month with a phone call. And many times when I go to visit with their churches, as I sit in meetings, folks share with me, they'll say something like, we just want it to be like it used to be. When the Sunday school was filled and the pews were filled and the yada, 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 you can fill in the blank for your church. And I used to say it at the church I served before I was hired by the bishop to do this work. As I served that church, I thought, oh, if only we can get the Sunday school going again and invent enough new programs to bring people in, and if only we can preach wonderful sermons, if only, if only, maybe we'll get back to the good old days. But the secret is, the good old days are not coming back. And the people who lined our pews are not coming back. People who used to be here, their children who we hoped would come here, they've grown up, they've gone on to do something else, especially something else on Sunday mornings. It's not 1960, it's 2012, and it's a new day. And every church, every religious organization, I'm talking Catholic, Jewish, Protestant, every religious organization, is experiencing what our United Methodist churches are experiencing. Graying population in the pews and fewer people among us. Now I know by this point you're thinking, who is that woman and why did she come in here to depress us on a Sunday morning? <laughs> well, what I like to do is face reality and then take it the next step. Okay? So, you know, they always say that awareness is the first step towards healing, so I've just given you awareness. This is where we are. And so now, how do we move from where we are to the wonderful future God dares to give us and show us? That's what I want us to talk about today. Now, now if you want facts on, and statistics on what I've just shared with you, we've got plenty of them. Wendy, Wendy knows where to get the facts and statistics. We have Gallup-type studies. We have studies that the Methodists have done. I downloaded a study um, a few weeks ago on the last decade in the life of religious organizations. It would bring you to your knees if you read that thing. For the changes that we have seen, in the life of the church. So we've got studies on what condition we're in, but I'm a person who likes to move things in new directions. It's gotten me into trouble in every church I've ever served, but I believe that God is a God with 20-20 vision. A God who asks us to take leaps of faith, to walk into uncharted territory, and to look into the future with new eyes. I visited your Facebook page to try to get an idea of what's going on here, the kinds of things your pastor has you working on. And I was very impressed, very impressed. She's pretty busy. She's got you doing lots of stuff. She told me the TV dinners thing had 30 people at it. There's big churches who can't do that. And the youth group making candy valentines for the shut-ins. I can tell that she is leading you through a time of visioning and imagining and changing the way you see ministry and do ministry in the 21st century. And that is so good. I'm like sure and tell the DS, the district superintendent. Part, maybe most of the reason I think that we've gotten ourselves into this mess in the first place is because we as churches have failed to do the visioning necessary, failed to change as our society rushed by with changes every day. 
We as a church have rested too long on our laurels and our wonderful history and failed to notice that the world around us was changing in significant ways. So now I think it's time to stop resting, to stop remembering the good old days of the church. It's time to look with fresh eyes at the future that God has in store for the whole church, for your church. There's nothing wrong with remembering our history as long as it doesn't keep us from acknowledging where we are right now and where God is calling us to go. Well, you're probably wondering, what's that got to do with the scriptures that we read today? Well, I think it has exactly something to do with it. Because Jesus asked his disciples in the gospel lesson today to look to the future. The conversation, and the conversation they had came at a critical time in his life and in their lives. The conversation that, that Wendy read today was the conversation that took place after Jesus went to the cross, after he died, after he rose again, after he appeared to all those who loved him. It was then that he shared the words we heard today. They were gathered to say goodbye. And Jesus was uttering what would become his final words to his disciples. You know what he told them? He didn't say stay in the upper room and just have wonderful sweet memories of all that we've done together. He told them to go. He said, I've taught you all these things, but now it's time to put them into action. Now it's time to get busy and go out. I love the words across your door. Go ye into all the world. That's what he said. Go out and make more disciples. Now I want to read this passage from the Message Bible. Jesus undeterred went right ahead and gave his charge. God authorized and commanded me to commission you. Go out and train everyone you meet, far and near, in this way of life, marking them by baptism in the threefold name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Then instruct them in the practice of all I have commanded you, and I'll be with you as you do this, day after day after day, right up to the end of the age. Now I chose this scripture to talk about the church's vision for the future because it's often the very thing we forget to do. To go out. To get up out of our comfortable seats and go out and share the good news of Jesus with others. With those who don't know him, with those who haven't heard about him, with those who have never met our Savior. We live in a very different world in 2012 than the world that I was born into. When most of you were born, we didn't, it wasn't anything like 2012. We live in a fast, technologically always changing kind of world. We live in a world of mass communication where people are exposed to news, religion, ideas, education in ways we never dreamed of 50 years ago. Do you realize the internet did not exist 20 years ago? Think about how much our world has changed since the internet was invented. Think about how little the church has changed. Therein lies the problem. So I'm all for working towards solutions, and here's what I, where I see the hope for the church. You're actually already seeing it here at Delmont. Wendy's showing you, helping you to see church in the 21st century. The fact that we're recording this and it goes on YouTube. And she told me this morning there's shut-ins who are complaining. I couldn't get to church and you forgot to post till Tuesday or whatever. <laughs> church in the 21st century looks little like you and I knew growing up. The music is more current and contemporary, more varied and unpredictable. The sermons are more colorful and image-based because we've discovered after hundreds of years of listening to people standing up and preaching that we learn in different ways. Sometimes we learn better by seeing. So some pastors use PowerPoint or they do altar displays or some other way of visually sharing the message. We learn by experience. So some churches do drama. Or they hand out things at the end of worship, like a stone. She'll hand you a stone as you walk out the door if the message has been about Jesus is the rock of our life. Or, 
or a, a seashell when, when the message has been about baptism in the water. We learn by doing. So many growing churches are engaged in mission on a regular basis, even on Sunday morning, some of them. Making soup sandwiches for the soup kitchen at the end of worship, kind of as a testimony to here we are serving others and going into the world. It's a new day for the 2020 church. And our children, after going to school all week, aren't too interested in sitting in another classroom. But they just might be interested in something more like a vacation Bible school format. One which keeps them moving from station to station, like go to the crafts section, go to the snack section, have a Bible lesson over here, and then see a drama. A 2020 vision for the church is what God is asking us to think about. Now, to be honest, the changes that I've just lifted up to you are the easy ones. It's easy to make those changes. It's the stuff that Jesus spoke about in today's lesson that is the hardest. Because he's asking all of us to carry the message we've learned in here to those we meet outside those doors. My friends, the days are gone when people move into a town, look in the yellow pages for a nice church, and start coming just doesn't happen. Those days are very rare. What we are called to do by Jesus himself is to begin to have conversations with people we already know about how God has changed our lives. Now I can imagine how scary that must feel. It's scary even to me <coughs> to, to broach the subject of talking to our friends who are unchurched about our faith lives. I have one of my best friends, doesn't go to church. She's still my friend and I'm still hers. But I know that I can try harder to grow her faith. What about you? Don't you have a friend or co-worker, maybe even a family member, who needs to know how God has changed your life? We all do. We all have people in our lives like that. And if the church is truly going to have hope for 2020 vision, it has to include our taking the message out, taking our experiences of God beyond these walls, taking the love that God has shown to us, taking it into the world. So I'm going to give you some homework. I didn't tell Wendy I was going to do this. Does she ever give you homework? No? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> now I planted the idea. <laughs> I like to give homework, I guess. My mother was a teacher, my husband you know, is a teacher, whatever. I want you to think about two people in your lives who need a word of hope. Maybe it's that single mom at work who is always stressed and just needs a listening ear. Maybe it's a neighbor who is sick and would really enjoy a home-cooked meal. Maybe it's your son or grandson who's been so turned off by the church but just needs some prayers and love because of it. I want you to think about two people who might need to hear about your relationship, what God has done in your life. I'm not talking about giving someone a dose of hellfire and brimstone preaching. I'm not talking about judging people's lives. As far as I'm concerned, that's part of the reason we're in this mess in the first place, is we've been way too judgmental. What I am talking about is sharing with others what Micah the prophet preached about from the first lesson we heard today. I'm talking about doing the just thing, doing the right thing, doing the kind thing, and walking with God every day. Sharing a meal with a worn out mom, Offering to pray with a neighbor who is sick. Accepting a son or grandson who is different, but still a wonderful child of God. If we are to be the visible, viable, visionary body of Christ, then that is how this ancient church can march into the future. With justice and kindness. And the love of God firmly planted in our hearts and shared. 
with everyone we meet.